Please be seated. I first need to thank some people. Uh, you may not know it, but there's a lot that goes into preparing a worship service, whether it's the bulletins, the musicians, the readers, the assistant, the people who do the sound and the broadcast. There are all kinds of things going on to make a service like this work. Among those things are the deacons who do all kinds of things behind the scenes. I had a very embarrassing moment with the deacons about a month ago. My wife's friend from high school had died and there was a memorial service in Southern Ohio on that Sunday. So there I was getting ready, just about to get into the shower when all of a sudden the doorbell rang. I was expecting a package from Amazon. I quickly put on some shorts and went to the door bare chested and opened the door. And who was there? One of the deacons from the church. <laughs> handing me flowers saying, happy birthday. You're welcome. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them, other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was grown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, may my words reflect your word in loving kindness for all your children. Amen. It is a great time of the year. In winter, grocery stores have near perfect looking tomatoes. The tomatoes are round, red, with near perfect skin. Once you touch them, they tend to be hard. Once you taste them, 
they have all the excitement of attempting to eat styrofoam and about the same taste. This, this is a great time of the year with red, ripe summer tomatoes from a farmer's market or a backyard garden. Before my retirement and returning to my hometown of Columbus, my wife and I lived near, well, actually, we lived in a beautiful home in Northwest Ohio. Our home sat on a large piece of land near the Tiffin River. The Tiffin River is the only river in Northern Ohio that flows south to the confluence of the Maumee River and empties into Lake Erie. It was near this river I decided to build a garden. I wanted to build a raised box garden. I purchased about $100 worth of wood. This was followed up by about $100 worth of topsoil. Finally, I planted tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, green peppers, banana peppers, zucchini, and cucumbers for another $75. I purchased some fertilizer, another $20. Some of you are getting ahead of the story. Stay with me. Because there were rabbits and groundhogs, I put up netting to keep those critters out for about $50. Before I could complete the netting, my staple gun broke. So now I purchased a new staple gun with smaller staples, about $40. By the time I got back with the new staple gun and staples, I had to chase rabbits out of the garden. With my new staple gun, I was putting the final touches on the netting when I noticed, on the finished side, a blue racer snake was caught in the netting. I had to cut the snake out of the netting. After that, I had to get a new section of netting for about $10. Then I noticed some insects were eating the leaves of the plants. I purchased some vegetable dusting for another $20. It was dry that year, so I had to water the garden, and I have no idea how much that cost. The groundhogs and the rabbits stayed away. Suddenly, two raccoons appeared. With the netting, the raccoons decided it wasn't worth the struggle, so they stayed away. By July, I had my first red ripe tomato. I learned two things from that garden experience. The first thing I learned was, that first tomato cost me nearly $500. <laughs> the second thing I learned was that the American farmer need not feel threatened by my agricultural skills. <laughs> Great crowds had gathered to listen and learn as Jesus taught by the Sea of Galilee. The crowd was so great, the people stood on the beach while Jesus went out on the water in a boat. He told them many things in parables. Today's Gospel reading is about the parable of the sower. There are four settings for the planting of these seeds. The first seeds fell on a path and the birds ate them up. The second seeds fell on rocky ground with out much soil. Those seeds sprang up quickly, but soon were scorched in the blazing sun. The other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth an abundant crop, some of 100, some of 60, and some of 34. The audience of Jesus was set in a mostly agrarian society. They knew having a yield of four to 10% could be a good year for crops. Having a crop yield of 60, 30, or 100% was unheard of. Jesus now had their attention. 
Jesus said to them, Let anyone with ears listen. In the Gospels of the Christian scriptures, the disciples are frequently portrayed as slow to learn. I don't know if they were intellectually challenged or emotionally challenged or just stubborn, seeing things only with a particular mindset. What I do know is the gospel writers often paint a picture of the disciples as not understanding what Jesus was saying and doing. The Gospel of Matthew is building a bridge between the Hebrew scriptures, commonly called the Old Testament, and the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. When the disciples do not understand what Jesus was saying in this parable of the sower, Matthew records Jesus teaching them from the prophet Isaiah. Jesus quotes the prophet Isaiah saying, you indeed listen, but never understand. You indeed look, but never perceive. Ouch! Jesus proceeds to explain the parable of the sower to the disciples. Jesus starts with the seed sown on the path. Jesus says, this one hears about the kingdom of heaven, but doesn't understand. What was sown in this one's heart is snatched by the evil one. The seed sown on the rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it with joy. However, this one has no root and will only endure for a while. When trouble or persecution rise up on account of the word, they immediately fall away. The seed that falls among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but they get choked by wealth and they yield no fruit. The one who is sown on good soil hears the word and understands bearing fruit one can hardly imagine. One hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. When Holy Scriptures are read on Sunday morning here at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, we say, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Then everyone responds with, thanks be to God. On the surface, reflecting on this parable of the sower, we might be asking, do I understand? Or, have I lost the joy I once had and because of a lack of root, I've fallen away because of challenges? Or, have I been so comfortable in wealth, seeking wealth and keeping wealth, I have no fruit? Or, have I been sowing the good soil, have I been sown in the good soil, paying it forward that my life has borne much fruit, so much fruit others can only imagine. As I hear this parable, I understand it as a series of parables about what Matthew calls the kingdom of heaven. Note, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus addresses the kingdom of heaven not the kingdom of God, as in other Gospels. These parables about the kingdom of heaven are actually parables about the reign of Jesus. We say this regularly in the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. Our world is quite complicated. We gather with our brothers and sisters relatives and friends here at First Church. Some even make a covenant with this congregation, with the United Church of Christ, and with Almighty God as members. Some get snatched away by the evil one. That could be by an addiction, sports, and or work demands. Some had great joy for the life for the church and then began to fade. Some have been choked 
by the building and accumulating of wealth. Thank God we have those who have been sown on good soil, often being the guides for the rest of us for truly following Jesus. Following Jesus is also complicated. On one level, we give to those in need. You know, the special offerings, the one-on-one -on -one stuff like work with our youth, donating to a pantry, or helping a relative in need, or supporting bread and the Nehemiah action. At a deeper level, it gets more complicated. By that I mean the systematic challenges in our world and in our nation. In our nation, there is so much wealth. Why are more people needing food assistance and communities in food deserts? Why are prisons filled with disproportionate populations of black and brown men? Why is there hate and violence on the increase against people of the Jewish faith and the LGBTQ plus community? Why are women's health issues a political football instead of decision of conscience and health and with her health and her health with her medical team? Why are thousands of asylum seekers and those seeking immigration on our borders there? And we accept a Congress that has not acted with any relevant immigration reform in decades. So far this year, there have been over 330 mass shootings in the United States, and common sense gun reform has not happened. As I said, the practice of our Christian faith gets more and more complicated. The first President Bush loved to tell a story about visiting a nursing home and creating quite a stir as he mingled with the residents and chatted with them about their lives. The patients were all starstruck, of course, and the President was quite proud of himself. As he moved down the hall, he encountered a man with a walker who barely noticed the special visitor. The two men shook hands, and though the old man was gracious, he didn't seem particularly impressed. Finally, the president asked, Sir, do you know who I am? I'm perturbed. The fellow replied, No, I don't. But if you go over there to the nurse's station, they can tell you. That's where we are today, asking ourselves, who are we with the seeds planted in us by Jesus? Do we really understand the words of Jesus? Did I somehow let the joy I once had slip away? Am I so comfortable in my wealth that I have forgotten to feed the body and soul of others? Is my life truly living the life Jesus intended, an abundant life, not measured against others, but in a faithful reflection of the life of Jesus? If you come up short, so do I. Yet that is our challenge today, to be the good soil Jesus has called us to be. Amen.